Today, we're gonna to take a look at how we can virtualize OpenSense within our Proxmox hypervisor. If you're not familiar with OpenSense, it's a great open source firewall and router that can be used to replace your consumer grade routers like your TP-Link or Linksys router that you might already have. So to do this, we need to go over into our Proxmox hypervisor. If you haven't set up uh, Proxmox before, there's a link down in the description below that'll walk you through a video I have on how to set up Proxmox. But assuming that you already have it up and running, first thing we need to do is go out and uh, set up our network con uh, connections. Within here, you, you typically have your one network connection that you would have built into the motherboard for uh, the machine. I'm using an old desktop for this project. I've also added in one of these cards. It's a, a two port PCI card with uh, Intel chipset. Intel chipsets work really great with, uh, with OpenSense. I'll leave a description in the, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in uh, looking at that card. What we need to do though is create some network bridges so that we can pass those ports, the physical ports, into the virtual machine. So to do that, we're gonna take the, uh, the ID here. So just so I don't type it wrong, I'm gonna copy the ID. We'll go up to create, hit Linux bridge, uh, leave the name, you can change it to wherever you want, but, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it there. We'll go ahead and put in the port that we're gonna be using to bridge. We're not gonna say VLAN aware because this is actually gonna be our WAN port. So we don't need that one to be VLAN aware. We'll say create. And then we're gonna create one more and this is gonna be our LAN port. And that's the second uh, of the two ports up there. So when I put this one in, I uh, change it to a one to make sure that it's pointing to the right port. This one will be VLAN aware because we might want to, be, might want to run uh, VLANs over it. And I'm just gonna call this one LAN. And that's all we need to do to create our ports. Now we're gonna go create the virtual machine. Okay, the one thing we need to do before we create the virtual machine is actually hit apply configuration. That's gonna actually uh, write all that stuff to the uh, Proxmox hypervisor and make sure that those uh, Linux bridge ports are set. So now we're gonna create that virtual machine. To do that, we just go up here to the top right, click create VM. I'm gonna call it uh, 100, doesn't really matter what, you, what number you give it. Uh, I'm gonna call it OpenSense since that's what we're gonna create a virtual machine in. You want it to start at boot, obviously, because this is gonna be your network router. Hit next. Um, here we've got the ISO, I've already downloaded it. I'll have the link in the description below where you can download OpenSense, but I've gone ahead and downloaded the, uh, the ISO image for this and uh, extracted it. So we'll use that as our uh, image that we're gonna to boot to. The system, I'm not gonna make any changes here. If you want to, you can change this to Q35 if you wanna do any PCI pass through, but since it's a uh, firewall router, I don't really envision a uh, pass through right now. So we'll hit next. Uh, the size of the disk is really whatever makes sense to you. I'm gonna do 64 gigs just in case there's a lot of log files or, or any changes or, or you wanna um, add a bunch of um, uh, plugins or anything like that. Probably overkill, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it 64 gigs. I'm gonna check discard uh, and then we'll hit next. Over here for cores, I'm gonna go ahead and give it four cores. And then down here, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna actually add in the AES support because we wanna be able to have um, hardware acceleration if we do things like uh, VLAN, or not VLANs, but uh, VPNs and we wanna VPN into this, it'll help with some of the in encryption. So then we wanna create the memory. I'm gonna give it eight gigs, which is 81, 92, I think, I think that's right. And then I'm gonna make it a ballooning device so it'll bounce between uh, 4096, which is four gigs and eight gigs. And then the next uh, thing we wanna assign is an IP or a uh, network uh, connection. If you remember, we created a WAN and a LAN connection. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the WAN one right now. And since we have um, four cores, I'm gonna give multi-queue to set to four as well. Now. Uh, don't create start or click start yet because we want to actually create the VM, but we need to add in our LAN port as well since we can only add one port there. So let's go over to our virtual machine here and we'll go to hardware. And if you say add network device, we can go here and we're, we're going to select another one. We're going to drop down to the LAN. And again, with this one, we're going to say four for multi-queue and say add, and now you have the WAN port and the LAN port added in here. So we're ready to go ahead and start up and install everything. We'll go ahead and hit uh, the console, hit start now, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and uh, boot into the installer and give you a login prompt. At that point, we'll, we'll start the installer and we'll run through everything. And while it's starting up, 
If you're finding these kind of videos useful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you can get notified of all the new ones. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to drop in any suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see. Okay, so now we've gotten to the command prompt and we're ready to do the install. To do that, you need to log in as installer and the uh, password is OpenSense, O-P-N-S-E-N-S-E. -E -S -E. There we go, I got it right. All right, so uh, continue with the default key map. If you have a different key map, obviously for your region, go ahead and select that. I am not gonna do uh, ZFS because I'm not gonna manage any of the snapshots within it. Since it's a virtual machine, I'm gonna back up the whole virtual machine. And if I need to restore it, I'll just restore the whole virtual machine. Um, but really it's up to you if you wanna uh, manage any ZFS snapshots within um, OpenSense. So I'm gonna do the UFS. We're gonna select the 64 gig or whatever size hard drive you selected. Uh, we're going to do an 8 gig swap, which is fine. Uh, and then here it's just warning, are you sure you want to wipe this since it's a virtual machine? Yep, absolutely. We're going to go ahead and wipe this uh, drive. It's going to create uh, all the drives, set everything up, and start the install for us. Okay, depending on your hardware, it may take a little while to uh, do the install. We'll go ahead and run through it real quick here and uh, meet at the end so we can finish things up, change the password, and uh, reboot into our server. Okay, with installs all done, go ahead and uh, change the password. You can uh, change it whatever makes sense to you. Uh, and then go ahead and hit complete install, hit the mount or the arrow down, hit okay. And we'll go ahead and reboot and uh, show you how to log into the system. Okay, now that we've finished the install and we've rebooted, it's time to log into the user interface for our OpenSense virtual machine. To do that, we're gonna actually take our uh, computer cable, our ethernet cable and directly plug it into our uh, LAN port on the new virtual machine. Now, because it doesn't have DHCP running, we need to manually adjust our IP address so that we can actually connect in. Otherwise, you're just gonna get the, the spinning hourglass and never connect to anything. So let me show you how we can do that. If you're on Windows, you can go to Network and Internet Settings. Over here on Ethernet, click on Edit for your uh, IP assignment. And since it was 192.168.1.1, which is the LAN IP address, it's whatever yours would come up as, we're gonna say Manual. Turn it to IP4. We're going to type 192.168.1.2. We're just going to give us the .2 uh, IP address. 255.255.255.0 as the subnet mask. The gateway is going to be the IP address that we were just looking at, which is 192.168.1.1. And then you can put in whatever DNS you want. I'll just do 1.1.1.1, which is Cloudflare's DNS. So again, we're giving us uh, an IP address so we can connect to this. So we're gonna plug our ethernet cable directly from our machine into the LAN port of the new, uh, new um, virtual machine. The subnet mask, this is the gateway. So this is gonna be the uh, IP address of our new router, which is the OpenSense virtual machine and the DNS. We'll hit save. As soon as that, you'll see that we have no VNC connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move the cable from my current switch to the back of it so we can log in. Okay, so I've taken the ethernet port again and I've plugged it directly from my computer into the uh, LAN port of our new uh, router that we're creating, our OpenSense virtual, OpenSense virtual machine. So we'll create an, or open up a new window. We're gonna go ahead and put in our IP address, which is the 192.168.1.1. It'll browse to it since it's a self-signed certificate. It'll uh, give you this warning. You can ignore it. Proceed to uh, the address and go ahead and put in root is the password now and the pass or the username the password is whatever you changed it to in the install if you didn't change it in the install it's still going to be open sense so go ahead and log in and we'll meet you inside all right so here we are we're in our very own virtual machine running open sense your very own uh, router running within a virtual machine on proxmox so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you through a, a setup guide Go ahead and go next through that, make any changes that you want. Uh, I went ahead and I'll put in the 1.1.1.1, the which is the Cloudflare DNS servers. You can put in whatever makes sense for you. We'll go through, you can change the time zones if you want. For now, I'm just gonna leave that. Um, set up DHCP is what we want. We definitely want DHCP so that we can get uh, IP addresses assigned to all our machines as they uh, connect to the network. We'll go ahead and hit next here. Um, I'm going to leave the local LAN network IP address the same here. You can change it to whatever makes sense to you. And the net mask is going to be 24, meaning that only the, uh, I, the numbers down here will change. So everything above it will stay the same. So you have about 250 different IPs you can use in that LAN. We'll hit next. 
I'm not going to change the password since I already changed it and we'll hit reload and this will reload all the settings based on whatever changes you made there. And then what we can do um, is we can go over here to the dashboard. You can take a look at all the different widgets. There's tons of widgets that you uh, you have options to, to take a look at. You also have a number of different widgets you can add here to be able to monitor everything, see if there's any uh, firewall issues. By default, everything is blocked coming in, so there isn't uh, there in a single port open, kind of like a consumer-grade firewall. So you can go in there and you can make changes to the firewall here. You can uh, set up rules and routing. You can go into the interfaces, which is what we've already set up, which is our WAN uh, port that we set up uh, originally, which is what we passed through for our virtual machine. And you can also go in and uh, change things within your LAN port to set up uh, static IP addresses and whatever um, uh, ranges that you want to have for your DHCP ranges. So I hope this helped. I hope you're able to get your own virtual machine up and running. This should be a great option for you in your home lab, whether you're using this for your uh, full-time router or you just want to kind of spin this up in a lab environment and test things out. It should be great for uh, whatever you want to use it for. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get to them. And for those of you who've already subscribed, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.